Hi, this is Nam. And it's Kathy. And this is our first walkthrough of one of Kathy's paintings. Uh, this one is episode one. D is for donkey. So Kathy, tell us a little bit about this painting and how you conceived it. Uh, well, I'm doing an a animal alphabet series that um, I'll be posting on Instagram. I'm on the letter D. I did antelope, baboon, cheetah, um, and for D, I'm doing donkey. And so I know this donkey is spotted. Is there any different approach you take to a spotted animal versus one that is all one color? Well, I, the reason why I picked spotted donkey, um, so you know there's a photo reference not on the screen um, of a brown and white spotted donkey. The reason why I picked a spotted donkey is because it just looks more interesting than a solid color donkey. It seems more rare and it's actually more interesting to paint because of the different um, blending and bleeding of colors that I can play with. And um, could we walk around your table for a little bit and can you walk us through all the tools that you're using today? Yeah, so I'll start from the top is uh, my color, my paint uh, storage palette, I guess. That's where I um, store all of my watercolor paint. Um, and on the top right, I have my paint water. There's a little bit of a small corner of another watercolor set um, by Kurotake that isn't really shown here, but I'm not really using it for this painting. And then down below, I have my Princeton watercolor brushes and synthetic watercolor brush and uh, color palette, mixer palette. So I'm kind of alternating between, I think I'm using a size 8 at the moment, between a size 8 and a size 12. Is that brush. your standard um, brush sizes that you use, or it just depends on the project? Yeah, I think for most paintings, I, I paint between a 9 by 12 and a 12 by 16 inch. So I use um, anywhere between a size four to a size 12 brush. It really depends on the detail that it really depends on the level of detail of each painting. But for the most part, I start with the larger brush to apply a base layer color. And I use a smaller brush for more of the detail. So right now I think I'm using a six. I'm not too sure. And what's going on in the bottom left-hand corner? What's that? That's uh, called Brushel, or a B R U S H O Crystal Colors. You can get it on Amazon. An artist friend of mine actually um, s recommended it because it creates these cool splatter effects um, with this powder product. So what I did was I sprinkled a little bit of the Brushel Crystal. It's a dark brown shade and sprayed some water over it and it'll create that nice splatter but i don't want it to dominate the donkey so i just add a little bit below the belly because i still wanted to use the brush to kind of define the spots do you want to give a shout out to her yeah it's uh amy at hope so on instagram h-o-p-e-s-o-e -E. thanks for the recommendation amy and with those paints that you're using today, are they, do they all come in tubes or how does it work? Yes, all my watercolor, well, except for the Kurotake kit on the top right comes in a set of, um, I guess they're called grids or boxes or whatnot. Um, everything you see on screen is from a tube and I use Windsor and Newton, um, Senelier, which is a French brand. It's my favorite. And uh, I can't remember the other one, but those are the two main ones. So you mix paints from different companies all together on the same palette all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what you see is pretty much all the colors I have. And so right now you're working on the eye, and that's usually the hardest part for you, right? 
Yeah, and I say that till last because an eye can really make or break a painting. And、um, sometimes the、uh, rest of the painting kind of sets the mood for how I want to portray the eye, which is another reason I'm doing it last. I've tried doing the eye once, and it was just it turned out horrible. It, it looked way too fake, so I feel like I needed to do. Everything else first, but I'm curious to see if people are approaching it differently. You mean、um, you've done it, done the eye first, and then the rest of the body? Yes, not for this donkey, but for something else before, and it didn't really work out. It's crazy how the eye humanizes the painting, doesn't it? Yeah. So then now you're putting on your、um, finishing touches, and how do you know when a painting's finished? I just use my intuition, I guess. I don't add a lot of details to my donkey. Like you don't see any actual fur.、Um, the nose is really loosely defined. I mean, you kind of know where everything is, but it's not meant. To, my style is not meant to be realistic. So with that, I feel like it's actually easier to call it complete because it's. It's my own style, and you know I can always add layer to it. I can add more detail, but I tend to gravitate towards the more、um, abstract or impressionistic paintings. So, and I would say for a painting this size, I usually usually takes me less than an hour to do, including sketching. Sketching here took me maybe less than ten minutes. Um, but sometimes I would say I spend more time finding a photo reference, or multiple photo references, than actually painting,、uh, just because I'm picky about the composition and color and all of that. Not the color, not so much the color, because I can always add my own color. And at the end, here you can see I use two different size brush, actually three different size brush, and splattered some paint over it. That's really fun. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode.、Um, we will. We don't know when we're gonna post the second episode, but once we figure out the proper cadence, then you should find videos from us regularly.、Uh, thank you for joining joining us for this episode. Thanks.